Hello, John Bloodworth Gentleman Crafty here with something new for 22. This is the first in a series of blog posts and videos that I will be sharing featuring foundation paper piecing. Now, if you're not sure what that is, it's basically paint by numbers for fabric. So essentially, I'm going to be offering you a free pattern each week together with the cutting list and of course, uh, a video showing you how that gets assembled. So if you'd like to sew along, you're more than welcome to. And look out for details at the end of this video for ways to share your creations with me. Okay, so let's get on with this first one, which is called Diamond in the Square. So first of all, a very quick look at what I've been using or what I will be using. So I've got a rotary trimmer, some pins, in fact, one pin, uh, a quilting ruler, a Teflon presser, some trimming snips and some fabric glue. I've already trimmed out the pattern, having printed it on foundation paper piecing paper. I've already cut the bits to size as well, according to the cutting chart on the free downloadable pattern, which you can get from the blog, gentlemancrafter.com. And it tells you there what size and how many to cut and whereabouts in the pattern they will appear, which is numbered. So as I said, a bit like paint by numbers, but for fabric. If you want to print lots, I've done a sheet with four patterns on. Or if you're just doing a single block, I've done a single sheet for just the one pattern. And you can see how you can see through that foundation paper piecing paper. And that's important because we'll be sewing from the front, but putting our fabric pieces on the back. Now, when I'm putting the first piece down for this diamond in the square, I do like to add a tiny little bit of fabric glue to the paper. And then I'll use the alignment guides, that's the dotted lines, not the dashed lines, to position the first piece. And it goes right side facing up, away from the paper. Next, I basically need to position the first triangle, which will go between sections one and two. So that goes along the edge of the fabric and as close to the center of that line as you can get it. I then just pin it in place, making sure that pin won't run under my uh, sewing machine foot. And then basically, I'm going to turn this over and sew along the dashed line between sections one and two. So over to the sewing machine I go. And I'm positioning it so that I start right at the beginning of that dashed line. And I will do one single reverse stitch, or if you've got a lock stitch on your machine, perfect, do that. And then I'm just stitching along with a very short stitch length on my brother machine, it's 1.6, uh, but you're wanting as little space between the stitches as possible uh, because basically that's going to help you tear away the paper later on. Once I get to the end, I do a re reverse stitch or a lock stitch, trim the threads on both ends, and then basically I need to press back that triangle so that it fits over section two. Out comes the pin and then the Teflon presser is a great help here as it means I don't have to use the iron. I can just basically finger press that uh, seam down. There we go, nice and crisp. So next we'll move on to the section between one and three. Same again, positioning one of those triangles that I've pre-cut as close to the center as possible and along the fabric edge. If you take your time doing this, it really does help because basically foundation paper piecing is a way of getting super accurate corners, points and uh, stitch lines. Same again when it gets to the sewing machine. Just basically put the presser foot down at the very beginning of the dashed line between sections one and three, stitch along, and then lock stitch or reverse stitch in place. Trim 
Trim the threads when you get to the end. And that's on both ends. I do it as I go just because it basically makes it tidier as I work. If you want to trim them all at the end, it's up to you. Okay, again with the Teflon presser, just making sure that uh, stitch line is well pressed. And now we move on in numerical order, so I'm going to section four. Now some of you may be familiar with foundation paper piecing, and you will have wondered why I haven't been trimming as I go. And that's basically because I've tried to calculate these to be as close to the size of the pieces that I need uh, without having to do lots of trimming as I go. There is some final trimming at the end, but basically, hopefully, this saves on fabric. Again, stitching between lines uh, sorry, sections one and four. Lock stitch at the start. Stitch along. And then lock stitch at the end. I would love to have included the sound of the sewing machine as it's a nice sound. However, I did have various true crime podcasts and TV shows on the go while I was doing this. So A, copyright, I couldn't put that in the video. And B, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to hear all that stuff going on. Especially not right at the start of 2022 if, they, if you're watching this when it first goes on YouTube. Don't panic, by the way, if you haven't got all of the pieces that you need for this straight away. You can come back and, and start this from the beginning whenever you want to. Even do it several times, it's entirely up to you. This is just one of those things that I'm thinking of doing throughout the year just to keep me in, the, in practice with sewing, stitching, as it really hasn't had that much of a mention on my blog over the years and it's one of my favourite pastimes. In fact, I think it was probably one of the first creative things that I was doing way back, alarmingly, over 30 years ago. I was actually listening to um, a show the other day about 80s music, and I suddenly had the realisation that music released at the beginning of the 1980s is now 40 years old. How terrifying is that? Anyway, random waffle. Now, basically I've just done again the same for section five as I did for the other three sections. So I'm going to take the pin out and press as I've done all the way along. And then you can see we've got lots of bunny ears or fox ears, depending on your point of view, sticking out, plus the paper. And we want to get rid of that and trim this back to the solid line on the outside of the pattern. So I'm going to get my quilting ruler and rotary cutter. And trim back everything to that solid line. And this will just basically make it a very neat block that you can then stitch together with others that you've made. It doesn't have to be the same design. You could do an entire quilt just of totally random ones. You could use different fabrics for each section. It's all up to you. Within the pattern, I have included a guide on how many you would need to cut for certain size projects. So hopefully that will help as well. If you're thinking of making something like a table runner or 
just larger blocks for inclusion in another block itself. So there's patch number one done, diamond in the square. And it's got the quarter inch seam allowance ready to stitch together with other blocks like I've started doing here. And you can see how well that this paper piecing method helps us um, position those points together. Now, when it comes to the end, what you'll do is basically fold over the paper and tear away. Now, don't do this until you've basically assembled the quilt top or the part that it's going to go on to. And, unlike I'm doing here, if you work in reverse numerical order, it makes it much easier to tear away all of the parts that you need to. And basically, what you're left with is the fabric perfectly stitched and nobody will know your secret. I would love to see what you make with these foundation paper piecing blocks, whether it be a single block or an entire project. If you'd like to share them with me, then please do think about coming over to Facebook and joining my Facebook group specifically dedicated to this particular video series. I'll leave a link in the description below the video on YouTube and of course in the blog post on my blog gentlemancrafter.com